In this video, we're going to take a look at some more definitions about uh, line integrals and how we can ultimately compute some line integrals that maybe get even slightly more complicated. So here's what we have for the starting definition. Suppose that we have a curve C. Remember, that's like our green curve we've been working with in the past several videos. And if that's a piecewise smooth curve, then by that we mean that C is the union, it's kind of the collection, of a bunch of finite smooth curves C1, C2, up through Cn, where the initial point of one of these curves is the terminal point of the one that comes before it. So down here, you can see that we used to have curves that were maybe just something like this. Maybe that's a curve C. But if I wanted to create a curve that's piecewise smooth, I could maybe say that there's like one portion, then another portion, and then another portion. And so if each piece is individually smooth, I can say that the total is a piecewise smooth curve. Well, here's an important fact then about curves like this. If C is a piecewise smooth curve, then we define the integral of F along C as the sum of integrals along each of the smooth pieces. So essentially, if C is a union of finite smooth curves, so again, if I have like green piece, red piece, blue piece, then if I want to integrate across the whole thing, I just integrate across each individual piece. That's almost identical to some of the ideas that we have for basic integration. So this should hopefully seem like a fairly familiar concept. If I have a curve that's broken up into different pieces, I just integrate across each of the individual pieces. We can see how this works down here in something like example number two. So suppose that a curve C consists of an arc C1, which is given by this parabola. And then from 0 to 2, 2 is kind of where those points are laid out, or where, where this curve is laid out. And then after that, starting directly from 2, 2, we're going to get a line segment that connects 2, 2 to 2, 4. And our goal is to evaluate this line integral. OK, so really quickly, I'm going to draw a picture of what it is that I'm working with here. It seems like I only need stuff in the positive y direction here. So I'm going to set up my axes like this. Now, I know that from 0, 0 to 2, 2, I'm going to follow this parabola path. Okay, so maybe that's my parabola path. And we'll just mark this here as 2, 2. But then from 2, 2 to 2, comma 4, maybe 4 goes, let me adjust my y axis here. Maybe 4 goes up to here. Maybe on this piece, I have a slightly different segment. So you can see here, I kind of have two different pieces. And if I want to evaluate this line integral that I'm given, I can just evaluate across each individual piece. So I'll start by saying this. We note that the integral for this is equal to the integral along C1 plus the integral along C2. I go along the parabola first, and then across the line segment. OK, perfect. In order to convert these to something more manageable, I'll need to find parameterizations. So we need to find parameterizations for C1 and C2. OK, now we practiced doing some of this stuff back in chapter 2. So I'll say for C1, how about we create an R1? And I think this should actually be pretty easy to work with. Because since I already have something written here in function form for C1, I can just go ahead and say if x is a t, like if I plug in a number for x, um, there's a pretty obvious value for y. It's take that number, square it, divide by 2. And I can even see here where the value of t is supposed to go. I can state that t here has to exist from 0 to 2. Because again, that's where x had to exist from, and t and x are apparently the same thing. OK, I now also have to find a parameterization for c2. For c2, how about we create r2? Now this here is a little bit more complicated, because I've got to work with this vertical line. It's not too bad, though. Because I can see automatically, for every single point that I have here, what do I always want the x-coordinate to be? Well, yeah, I want the x-coordinate to always be 2. I never want it to change. Now, the y-coordinate can change, so I'll give that the value of t. And then I can say, 
well, where am I going to allow the value of t to range from? And that's pretty easy. I want the smallest t there to be at 2 and the biggest to be at 4. So I'm going to have y values that go from 2 to 4. So these are some beautiful options that I could use. So then I could go ahead and I could start to calculate. I could then say the integral then for this is going to be equal to, and I'll set up the integral first for c number 1. So the integral for c number 1 is going to look like an integral from 0 to 2. It's going to be of my function x. My function x here, remember, needs to be replaced with t's. So if I'm on r1, x is the same as a t. Then I have to do my uh, square root because I need to do the magnitude of the derivative of this. So I'm going to have to do 1 squared plus t squared dt. I'll do the same thing now for my next integral. This one is going to be integrated from 2 to 4. Here the function is just going to be 2. That's what replaces x. And again, I'm going to have here 0 squared plus 1 squared. Again, dealing with all my derivatives. So the second integral here is super, super easy. It's the first integral that's maybe a little bit more complicated. Okay, so let's see. We'll evaluate each one of these separately, but first I'll clean them up. I have 0 to 2, and then I have t, 1 plus a t squared. I also then have an integral that goes from 2 to 4, and it's really just of 2. So that one's nice and simple. If I was to go ahead then and take a look at what I ultimately have, I can start to think about doing my antiderivatives. I can see maybe very clearly that my first antiderivative is going to be something like, uh, again, might have to do a u substitution here to see this particular fact, but I'll leave that for you to try. I'm going to get a 1 third 1 plus t squared to the 3 halves, and I got to evaluate that from 0 to 2, and then I'm going to have 2t evaluated from 2 to 4. Ultimately, this is going to leave me with, uh, let's see, this is going to be 5 to the 3 halves. Mm, wait, hold on. 1 third times 5 to the 3 halves minus 1. When I plug in my next set of stuff, I'm going to get 8 minus 4, which is, of course, going to be 4. And so I have a final calculation that looks like this. Again, I'm kind of moving through the evaluation of the integrals fairly quickly. Your goal is really to focus more intensely on the setup of these integrals. And I'll leave it to you to confirm a lot of the calculations on your own. So this is a powerful under, uh, a concept of the fact that if I have a curve that's broken up into multiple pieces, not a big deal. Just integrate across each of the pieces.